this is Scott, and you have tuned in to The Rookie, Pacific Northwest Wine Enthusiast Channel. Yes, folks, you did hear that correctly. I have changed the name. I'm changing the focus of my channel, but I'm going to get into that at the end of the video a little bit later. Today, we are going to go ahead and review Kirkland Signatures Willamette Valley 2018 Pinot Noir. But before we go ahead and do that, if you like this content, please consider subscribing. When you do hit subscribe, there's a little bell icon. When you hit that bell icon, a little it's going to ask you to go for all or personalized. Make sure you select all. That way, when I do upload these videos, you are notified. Also, if you have a friend that really wants you want to get into wine, specifically Pacific Northwest wines, go ahead and you can share this content with them on whatever social media you desire. Also, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this as well. That way, the whole YouTube algorithm thing uh, really works for me. So, anyways, Pinot Noir. Love it, hate it. The movie Sideways gave it a, some people say, a well-deserved boost. Others will say it was overrated. Um, I'm not here to judge the movie. I'm not here to judge the Merlot, which took a huge hit when that movie came out. But I am here to judge this Oregon Pinot Noir. Now, the entire West Coast, Washington State, Oregon, California, all three states have Pinot Noir. And I'll be honest with you, when I, if I have to rate them, I rate Oregon as the top followed by California, then third would be Washington State. And there's basically notes that I'm finding in each individual state that uh, either turn me off or turn me on to that particular Pinot Noir. When it comes to Oregon, Oregon has this one note that I find very prevalent in every Oregon Pinot Noir I've ever tasted, ex except for one, and I didn't really like that bottle because it tastes way too much like a California Pinot Noir, is Oregon Pinot Noir has a tendency to have a very earthy, mushroom, truffle, wet, forest floor note that I do enjoy, that I th find tends to give it a little bit of an interesting twist. Whereas California Pinot Noirs, for me, tend to be much more uh, old world style, very fruit forward Pinot Noirs, very, uh, I won't say sweet, but much sweeter than I like. And Washington Pinot Noirs, I've got a couple I may review. Uh, I may not. I don't know. We'll, we'll send. The, I, I'm finding a very uh, peppery note in Washington State Pinot Noirs that, that kind of turns me off to the entire varietal. But that being said, this particular one is done by Costco. I paid $14.99 for a bottle of this. And one of the nice things is, is that in this particular bottle, I was able to find out who Kirkland sourced this wine from. Now, right here on the back, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, read. This wine was, you know, where's my glasses at? This is the problem with getting old, is you need reading glasses sometimes. Uh, this, was, the, the winemaker on it is Sarah, Sarah Cabot. Now, I did a little internet searching, and Sarah is the head winemaker down at Battle Creek Cellars down in Oregon. Battle Creek is also owned by Precept Wines. So, thank you Kirkland for putting her name on there. I was able to, Precept Wines is, very, is an umbrella group. They own a lot of different Pacific Northwest style wineries, uh, Brown Family Cellars, Apex Cellars, Battle Creek. Uh, you have Sawtooth Cellars, uh, St. Chapelle. I think they're out of California. They also own uh, Gruet, uh, which is, there's more of the sparkling wines, but they own Waterbrook and they also own Washington Hills, amongst many others. So now we know this is who the winemaker is, and I've heard good things about Battle Creek, and I'll be honest with you, tasting this wine, I'll get into the notes here shortly, I'm looking forward to visiting Battle Creek to see what other quality wines this young lady is making. So let's go ahead and jump right in on the color on this using my handy dandy wine folly color chart. This is a pale purple, very clear. Now, one of the things I'm finding with this particular Pinot Noir, now this is my second bottle. I, I bought this a couple weeks ago, thinking, yeah, it's Kirkland Pinot Noir, you know, you know, and I've been impressed with their signature series, but this is not a signature series wine. When I opened it up, wow. This is an intense nose. I am getting, and my, my nose is not right in the glass on this. Right here, uh, about an inch or so away, I am getting plum, sugar plum, pomegranate, 
there's a floral note, almost a, a, a potpourri style of, you know, dried, uh, dried flowers. But there it is right there, right on the nose. There is that truffle mushroom uh, note that I just absolutely enjoy. There's also a slight sweet tobacco note, almost like a Swisher sweet note. Let's go ahead and jump right in to the sipping this. I cannot wait. Mm. Right off the bat, this is not a full bodied wine. This is a medium to medium minus uh, body on the wine. Tannins, I would say more of along, uh, along the lines of a medium. They're there, but it's not overpowering. Acidity. Now, this does have a little bit more of acidity. I would consult, uh, consider this a medium plus acidity on this. Alcohol sits at about 13.6%. Can't even taste it. And on the sweetness scale, this is a dry wine. This is a beautifully dry Pinot Noir. Oh, I love the nose on this. You can literally, with the nose on this, I'm sure there's much more notes that I'm missing, but this is one of those wines that I think I could probably fill three to five ounces in a glass and it would take me an hour to drink. The, the uh, uh, flavor profile on it, as I described, it hits the palate. It's very upfront, very forward. The mid palate kind of sloughs off, but the finish on this, I still have, this is a relatively long finish, I still have all, all, all that pomegranate, that fruit, but that sweet tobacco note. The mushroom and the truffle, though, have kind of waned off, but I'm still getting some of those, uh, those uh, fruit notes with the sweet tobacco on the finish. I would say this is a really good finish. For $15, this is a must-buy. It really is. Let's have one more sip of this. This is one of those wines. You know what? I'm actually getting a little bit more tan tannins on this on the second sip. I'd say I would go from a medium minus to a medium to a uh, to a medium on the tannins on this. Um, anyways, this is one of the ones. What I was gonna say is I, this is one of those wines. Literally, now the nice thing is, don't tell my wife this. She doesn't like that truffle note, that mushroom note, that rare, that earth note in the wine. So. Chances are I'll be able to drink this pretty much by myself. She prefers the more California style, very fruit forward Pinot Noirs. But anyways, if you're in Costco, if you see this, buy a case of it. This is for the value. For $15, this is top of the line type of Oregon Pinot Noir. I am, I am gonna take a trip uh, this next, uh, uh, this summer down to Battle Creek. These guys are now on the top, one of the top five places I'm going to try to hit because if this is what they produce for Costco and everybody knows that you got to mass produce for Costco and sometimes a lot of that quality sloughs off. I think based on the quality of this, I really do think I cannot wait to see what Sarah uh, Cabot has down there at Battle Creek. So anyways, like I said, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up on this if you like this wine. Have you had Kirkland Signatures Willamette Valley 2018 Pinot Noir? Let me know down in the comments down below. That being said, why did I change the name? Um, as you can see, I do like my whiskey as well, and I do like my spirits, and I love Pacific Northwest Craft Spirits. But it got to the point where my first love truly is wine. Why is my true love wine? Well, it's something my wife and I do often. We can go out and it allows me to spend some quality time with my wife. It's something we both enjoy. My wife will drink a spirit or two, but this is not what her passion is, right? And to be honest with you, the wine really is my first love, my first passion over whiskey. And don't get me wrong, whiskey's a close second. And I do have a lot of whiskeys. I've got some rums, by the way, and I've got some tequilas. But Wine, this channel, I think, really for me to focus down, I've had a problem the last couple months trying to focus in on 
what I want this channel to do, and I've come to the conclusion it cannot be both. It cannot be a whiskey, and it cannot be both a wine and whiskey channel. So I am going to go ahead and make this a strictly Pacific Northwest wines channel, which is, I'm really excited for the changes on that. For those of you that are subscribed to me that uh, really like the whiskey stuff, let me know stuff down in the comments down below. If you guys would uh, subscribe to a whiskey channel, separate whiskey channel as well, I think if I did that, it would. It, there are some problems with whiskey that I uh, really need to be very careful of. As you guys see, I have a lot of whiskeys here behind me, but compared to some of the other whiskey channels, I don't have the ability to purchase the newest, most craziest whiskeys. And if I did something like that, I probably would go ahead and try to keep it very Northwest centric as well. I am going to keep my whiskey uh, reviews on this, this the, my primary channel because let's be honest, that's part of the history of the channel. Um, so anyways, let me, please put down in the comments down below what you guys think. Uh, is this a good move for me or not? I think it's a good move, but let me know what you guys think. If you have any comments, questions, criticisms of the channel, put those down there as well. As always folks, you know, life really is too short. Please drink responsibly. The, the weather this, the last week has really been awful. Um, again, today is Valentine's Day when, the, when this gets published. Um, or like I said, I like call it Hallmark Conspiracy Day. But uh, please drink responsibly with your loved ones. Your loved ones can, you bottle of wine can be replaced. You cannot. So as always, life is too short for you to bad, for a bad bottle of wine. I almost said bad bottle of wine or whiskey, but... Again, I am making the change. Life is too short for a bad bottle of wine. Cheers. I'm going to have fun buying more of this wine.